a fault line that formed when the volcano erupted 631,000 years ago. Now, this is the area of Yellowstone Lake. The lake is a very huge lake, and it's on the southeast corner of the caldera. The caldera is where the red dotted line is, and the lake is at the 5, 6 o'clock position, as you can see. And that's a huge part of the caldera. And the scientists said that even when they have a stiff breeze blowing over the surface of the lake, that could, because of the fact that the lake sits on top of the roof of the magma chamber, that could cause earthquakes as well. Now Yellowstone is no stranger to earthquake swarms because roughly 50% of the seismicity in the region is attributed to earthquake clusters, earthquake swarms. But a recent tracking swarm of tremors hit the U.S. National Park deep under Yellowstone Lake, which is a 110 square mile body of water that is cut in half by the Yellowstone caldera boundary. Kindly support my Patreon channel because YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. You'll find very interesting, informative material there. Well, it's at least five videos that are totally different from what I have on my regular YouTube channel. Things that are censored on YouTube. I hope you enjoy them. You'll find the link in the description box below. Now, the boundary is the fault line of the present-day caldera that's formed about 631,000 years ago after Yellowstone's most recent super eruption. The so-called Lava Creek eruption shaped some of the park's modern features and it carved out a caldera measuring about 34 by 45 miles. The caldera was shaped by two previous events, the Huckleberry Ridge eruption 2.1 million years ago and the Mesa Falls eruption 1.3 million years ago. And in all three cases, the caldera was the product of the Yellowstone supervolcanic eruption, the monstrous quantities of volcanic material, ash, debris, and then the, it collapsed in on itself. Now, starting December 1st and lasting until a few days ago, December 7th, seismic stations in the Yellowstone region observed a swarm of earthquakes beneath the eastern part of Yellowstone Lake right on the caldera boundary. Although stronger swarms have been recorded in the past between December 2008 and January 2009, this swarm though was slightly larger than average in terms of the number of tremors and according to Jamie Farrell, an assistant research professor at the University of Utah Seismograph Stations, he's the chief seismologist for the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, the swarm's location is of particular interest, he says. The Yellowstone expert says, however, one interesting aspect of this swarm is that it occurred directly on the boundary of Yellowstone Caldera. It's a fault which formed due to the collapse of the surface during the most recent large explosion, the eruption, the super eruption of 631,000 years ago. Now, could this swarm be a reactivation of that boundary fault? Only further research will be able to address that question, but swarms on caldera bounding faults are relatively common. Another big swarm struck the caldera in September this year, when 100 earthquakes were recorded in the space of just one day. Such events are typically triggered by pressurized liquids, scorching water gases, and molten rock moving through the planet's crust. The September swarm occurred where the caldera boundary faults intersect a uh, regional fault zone, and faults are fractures or zones of fractures between two chunks of rock that move relative to one another. Sometimes the movement is rapid and manifests in the form of earthquakes, of course. Now, slower movements are known as creeps, and in other cases, the faults can extend from just a few millimeters to thousands of miles. Professor Farrell said on December 7, quote, at this point, it does not look like the current swarm beneath Yellowstone Lake will approach the size of some of the larger swarms that have occurred in the past few decades, but one never knows how things are going to go, especially when it comes to earthquakes, he says. He says we will continue to keep an eye on this swarm and see how it progresses. You can follow along by checking the seismicity map at the University of Utah Seismograph Station website. One thing is for certain, Yellowstone will continue to have earthquake swarms like this in the future, 
He says there are as much part of the Yellowstone life as the geysers and the hot springs, and they are all a manifestation of the incredibly dynamic nature of the region. Now let's remember that Yellowstone is one of the 20 supervolcanoes of the Earth. It has over 10,000 hydrothermal areas and over 60% of the world's geysers. Now whatever the case may be, geologists think it's unlikely the supervolcano will erupt anytime soon, but if it does, the odds of it being another explosive event like the one that happened, the super eruption that happened 631,000 years ago are low, they said. The U.S. Geological Survey, which monitors activity at Yellowstone, said Yellowstone is monitored for signs of volcanic activity by YVO scientists who detect earthquakes using seismographs and ground monitoring using GPS systems. YVO has not detected signs of activity that suggest an eruption is imminent, they said. So this is by Sebastian Ketley on Express UK. Thank you for your support.